Hey everyone, uh, welcome to episode five of our Go Fish series. Uh, we are today going to discuss a story out of Luke chapter eight. Mandy, why don't you tell us a little bit about this story? So this is a, a kind of, well, I say fun one. It's probably not actually anything really fun about this at all. <laughs> it's under but, your definition of fun. Yeah, sorry. Um, but it's the story where we see the man who has multiple demons um, come to Jesus and Jesus, you know, cast them out, cast them into pigs and the pigs like go off and die. Um, and the man wants to go with Jesus. Like after that, you know, he's cleansed of, of this. He, you know, we see that, um, Jesus not only attends to him spiritually, but also physically. Um, and then he wants to go with Jesus and Jesus says, no, like you need to go to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. Yeah, exactly. Go back to your people and tell your story. It's a very weird, it's weird, weird story. Why are, uh, why are we casting demons questions. into pigs? There's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff for you guys to talk about, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, but so why don't you take a second, do that, talk amongst yourselves, read through Luke chapter eight, verses 26 through 39, and talk through what you think this scripture is about. All right, so we're going to discuss three ways to um, find freedom from what's killing me. And so our first point of that is I must search for the one that can truly set me free. So John 8, 36 says, so if the sun sets you free, you are truly free. And I know that we got to have some discussion earlier about just like defining what that freedom is to, you know, like what does that freedom look like to each of us? Um, but also I think having a good place to to start might be you know, one of the things, like if we're going to search, we need to know where to start the search. So, you know, considering like, what does it look like to search for the one who can truly set me free? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that will look different to different people. There's a verse there from Jeremiah 29 that also talks about searching for God with all your heart. And that's, I guess the, the starting point we want to go from is that you got to be that person who is searching actively for God and, and looking for God to be a solution in, in the situation that you're dealing with. Yeah. And I think in this point too, we see that like, we might be confused about what freedom is or where to start searching, but there is a promise in that Jeremiah, like verse two, it's just that we do have a promise that like, that God is going to free us like from this, you know, I will, I will bring you back from captivity. And so I think that if we feel like that's such a heavy burden of like defining freedom or where to start, we can really settle in on like God's promise here and let that take some of the pressure off, you know? Yeah, that's good. So. And so our second way to find freedom from what's killing me is I must submit to the authority of his word. Uh, and so our verse for that, John 6, 63, it says, The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. And so in, in our story, it, it's Jesus's authority that comes in and makes a difference in a tough situation. And, uh, and so we're trying to think about whatever tough situation we're facing. Where is it that Jesus's authority speaks to that situation? Um so what do you think about that, Mandy? How, how does this work for us using this in this context? Um, well, I think that the emphasis on like of his word, I think it comes back to understanding scripture and believing the promises that God has here. Right. So like submitting to that, there's a lot of things in life. I think that we come across that we don't necessarily understand, but we sometimes like are in a position where one, we don't have any other choice but to submit, but in others, we have to make the actual choice to trust the people who we're working with or the people who've been put in authority like over us, right? We don't know the whole process, but we still have to trust them. And I think it's the same thing here is like, we may not always understand, but we have to submit to saying that we understand that God's authority and his word is stronger than, than whatever it is that we might be battling. Right. And this story is, a, again, we've, we've said it, it's a weird story. It's like, mm -hmm. why would Jesus cast demons into pigs? I really don't know what he's doing there. Right. But sometimes God does a lot of things that we really don't get. And sometimes we have to submit to that and, and um, 
you know, find ways to be obedient and faithful, even when things don't seem like they make sense to us. Yeah. I mean, think about in this situation, um, we were talking about how the people who like own the pigs or are feeding the pigs were like, probably what the heck? Like, this is not a scenario where like Jesus is looking like a good guy, you know, like he took him to go away. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Go away. We don't want you here. Yeah. Like what he does here totally freaks them out. They pretty much, he gets off the boat, does this miracle and then they send him back on the boat and send him out. Right. And so, um, and so I don't think that they were necessarily submitting to the idea that like what, what he does is good. Right. Yes. And so they sent him away. And I think there's a lot that we can look at there just figuratively, you know, for some of the things that we do with God, with other people, when we, when we don't understand. Yeah, exactly. So we want to talk about uh, submitting to the authority of God's word. And what we want you to discuss in your groups is, can you think of a time when you tried to do things your own way, when you tried to not submit to God's instruction or scripture or whatever, and maybe that didn't, go over so well for you and and did you or or can you tell me a time when you did choose to submit to the authority of god's word and how did that work out for you so take a minute and discuss that in your groups and so then our third point in how to find freedom from what's killing me is I must speak of the great things God has done for me. And this might be harder for some, and this might be easier for some. It really depends on, I think, how you're seeing your situation, how deep you are in it. Um, All of those kind of factors can play in. But I think that we have to choose this anyways. You know, people before, like Jeremy and I ever got married, people were like, you have to choose to like love each other. You have to choose to stay like, and that seemed like such a silly thing, you know, cause it's like, well, if God's doing great things in our lives, like it's easy to talk about those things, mm-hmm. but like actually choosing to speak of great things in moments when we're not feeling so great. That's a really, it's a really crazy concept in some, in some cases. Right. But I must speak of these things and it kind of changes our heart posture, our mental, you know, and emotional approach to our situation too, um, whenever we're able to be thankful anyways, you know? Yeah. And so all of our stories look differently. Like, you know, most of us didn't have like a thousand demons that got cast out of us and innocent pigs. But if we believe that Jesus is real and he's real in our lives, then there, there is some story about what God has done in our lives that that we can tell. And that's what I think we're being told is to tell your story, tell about, you know, your victories, but that may also mean telling about your defeats and your, mm-hmm. you know, things that didn't go so well, but you can still tell the impact that Jesus had in your life. And, and that's what we're really called to do. Yeah. And so that would just be our question for you guys today is what are the good things? you know, that, that God has done in your life that maybe you do need to tell someone, or even if you didn't think that that story was going to be impactful to anyone, you don't know until you say it. So what are some good things that, you know, that we can say that God has been doing in our lives? 